Hello everyone, my name is Marjorie and thank you for stopping by my channel, Jeter's Blessings. In today's video, I'm participating in a monthly challenge hosted by Sonia from Domestic Diva DIY. And this month's challenge is the lemon theme. So here are just a few of the DIYs that I have coming up. So stay tuned to watch these. Also, stay to the very end uh, as I will be showing another door hanger as a DIY. So I have these materials. Most were from Hobby Lobby, except for the tablecloth that was actually purchased at Walmart from a really huge roll in the fabric section. Um, and I just got that for about a dollar fifty. I got half a half a yard. So I take this picture from Hobby Lobby that I got from ninety percent off. Uh, I want to say it was probably about a dollar. And I'm just taking my Kiehl's chalk paint and doing a couple of good coats on here. Uh, with all the black, it took, I think, two or three coats. So once I got it all painted, I took the black and white gingham scrapbooking paper and I just trimmed it down to size and I added some Mod Podge and glued those down to the edges. Now I took, um, I, I'm going to take a couple of the lemon pieces off of the tablecloth and I'm just going to cut them out and I'll end up using some hot glue and gluing them as well to various places on the sign. So what I did is I just freehanded the word squeeze in there and, <clears throat> excuse me, and now I am just um, putting the lemon on there. Uh, I figured I would go ahead and put the word on there first, that way I could find the placement of the lemons a little bit better to make sure I'm not going to cover anything up. So after I glue everything down, I take the letters from Dollar Tree that you see on the right there and I just spell out the words, the day. So the whole saying is gonna be squeeze the day. Now for the second DIY, I had this that I used in a different project and it was just another one of those kind of pictures that I got 90% off from Hobby Lobby. I put some cardstock on it and it was just white. So I am just adding some Mod Podge here and I'm taking the napkins from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to uh, Mod Podge it on there just to cover up the white portion of the sign. So after I trimmed everything off, all I'm doing is taking some of this really pretty black and white gingham lemon ribbon that I had got from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just going to make a cute little bow and put it in the corner. 
I did want to keep this uh, pretty simple um, and not add too much embellishment on it so I thought it was already busy enough and so I'm just gonna add the bow on here and call it a day So for my third project, this, I actually used this for Easter and I made a little faux set of books and it says he is risen on one side. So I'm actually taking more of the napkin from the Hobby Lobby and I'm just adding it to the opposite side of this to make um, some other faux books. And I could actually use this and keep it with the dual purpose because I did not paint over the other side so if I wanted to do that then I then I could so once I got it added on I actually took the embellishments off and then just re-added them to the the books and right now I'm taking that tablecloth again and I am just going to cut out a cute little lemon that way I can glue it to the top because it kind of looked a little bit plain and I'm just going to glue it right there on the top next to the bow. So for my last project, I have this Easter sign from the Dollar Tree where I just took off the little feet and the little raffia bow. And I am taking my Kills chalk paint and white and I'm gonna give it a good couple of coats. Um, I did not want any of the board showing. I wanted everything to be a, a pretty good um, bright white on here. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the very ends and I am putting some Mod Podge on there. And again, I'm going to take some of the napkins from Hobby Lobby and I'm just going to Mod Podge it right onto the ends of the sign. And then once it dries, I do take a little um, sanding block from the Dollar Tree and I go ahead and just kind of um, run it run it over the edges to get all the excess tissue off of there. So once I have that done, I am just taking some of this beautiful ribbon from Hobby Lobby and I am going to add it next to the tissue paper just as a little extra um, decoration onto the sign.
I do overlap the ribbon onto the napkin because I do want to cover up some of the the edges where it would meet and I have my ruler there because I was actually trying to measure things out to make sure they were pretty even on both sides now the back of the sign I did not um, do anything with it I didn't make it look finished or anything like that but you guys definitely can you can use the crafting paper you can use felt um, heck you could probably even just peel off the paper and paint it uh, well, however you would like to do it to me it wasn't a big deal so I just left it the way it was So once I had that down, um, there was a saying that I had seen on a sign from Hobby Lobby and I was actually just kind of looking to see where I could write it and how I needed to space it out. And all I'm doing right now is just penciling it in. I always like to pencil everything in first before I use my Sharpie because I know if I went straight with the Sharpie then uh, I would really mess something up. So using the pencil first, it really helps me out. So once I have that written in pencil, then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush Sharpie marker and use it to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, trace over the letters. And I really like using brush markers when I'm doing my lettering. Um, it makes it just so much easier and smooth. So, as you can see, it says, Where Troubles Melt Like Lemon Drops. So I had this little styrofoam egg from Easter, and I painted it white, and then I painted it yellow. And now I just took a piece of greenery for some box wood and put it at the top for the leaves and I'm going to attach it onto this ribbon uh, this I put the ribbon on here to, in order so I could hang the door hanger and I thought the little lemon would be such a cute little touch so now that the sign is all complete here is going to be the base so what I have is three of the five gallon paint brushes and I have a couple of just cut off pieces of the, excuse me, paint brushes that I glued to the ends of the three large paint, uh, paint sticks. That way it'll stay in place. And then I'm taking some extra pieces that were, um, scrap from another DIY that I did and I'm just gluing those on and that way I'll have something to hang the sign on. So I do use a combination of the Gorilla Wood Glue and the Gorilla Hot Glue. Um, Gorilla Glue is just really really great. I don't know if anybody else out there uses the Gorilla um, Hot Glue but it is wonderful. Um, I found it at Walmart one time and started using it and I have not gone to anything else so if you haven't tried it I would suggest that you try it so now what I'm doing is I have these small <clears throat> zip ties and you can use large ones if you have them but I have a ton of the small ones and so I try to use them up where I can and all I'm doing is actually zip tying some Chanel stems on there. The zip ties will be tight enough that it will actually hold the Chanel stems in place. If you didn't have zip ties, then you definitely could put a couple of Chanel stems and tie them together and add them to um, the sign as well. I'm sure that's fine, but I really like using the zip ties. And so what I have here is just had some old mesh from a different project and this mesh came from Hobby Lobby now I typically like Hobby Lobby's mesh 
but um, it's a little on the thin side sometimes. And so I took three of them and put them together so it wouldn't be as see-through. Otherwise, because when I tried to use one, <clears throat> excuse me, when I tried to use one, it was just way too um, see-through and you could see the wood and I from the painter stick and I just did not like that. I did not want that. So I tripled up on the green, which they were cut at 12 inches. And then I have the yellow, which I cut at 15 inches. And then all this here is just called the ruffle method where you have the curl side going down and you just run your fingers up the center of the deco mesh. And it kind of gives you a, a ruffle, a bow tie, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it makes it really nice. Now, I will say when you're doing this, make sure that you grasp it as much in the middle as you can because if not one side's going to be sitting higher when it's all together when it's all set up uh, you'll have some parts of the deco mesh sitting higher than the other parts of the deco mesh the ends and so you may have a spot that looks a little too full or versus another spot that looks a little too thin. So when you put in the Chanel stem, I should just suggest kind of make sure that it's in the middle as best as possible. You know, I've, I've talked to different people and for some reason they are intimidated by these deco mesh wreaths and door hangers. All I can say, guys, is we all start somewhere. And what I've noticed over the years is that it's really, really hard to mess up on a wreath when it's deco mesh. Um, when you start putting it in, it may not look so good, but by the time you have all your deco mesh and all your ribbons in, it's going to be gorgeous. So anybody who's thinking about doing one, I say just go for it. So now I have all of my deco mesh in my Chanel stems. And so now I'm just gonna cut my ribbons into 14 inch tails and I'm going to dovetail them. <clears throat> so here, just as an added layer, I had some silver deco mesh from the Dollar Tree and I cut those into 10 inch pieces. And what I do is I just fold it in half, making sure the loop is on opposite ends when I have them gathered. And you can see that here. And then I just take them and pinch it in the middle, just like you would do the ruffle. And I put it in the Chanel stem and I kind of fluff them out a little, um, I spread them apart. So, <clears throat> The amount of deco mesh and the type of deco mesh you have is really going to depend on how full your wreath looks. If you have the real thin deco mesh, it's it's not going to be as thick, but if you have like the thicker deco mesh, um, your wreath will definitely be a little bit thicker and a little bit fuller. So now I'm just putting my tails on and I'm finding the center pinching it in the middle and putting it into my Chanel stem. Now I know from here I don't want to do anything else. I'm not going to add anything. So I just take my Chanel stem and I roll it under. And just to hide it, you can clip it off if you want to. You can take a pencil and, you know, make little squigglies with it, wrap it around the pencils, um, however you want to do it. Now all I'm doing is taking the rest of what's on my <clears throat> excuse me my lemon ribbon roll and I'm going to make a big bow for the middle that's why you don't see any tails there because I knew I was going to put a bow there 
And that's just a little tip on saving on some ribbon. Um, if you know where you're going to place your bows, um, you don't have to worry about putting your tails there because your bow is going to be so full and it's going to take up a lot of space that you don't have to worry about it. You're not going to tell that you don't have tails sticking it out of the Chanel stem. So I just have three ribbons that I'm rolling over on itself. And then I'm going to trim it off and fold it in half. Now once I have it folded in half, I'm going to cut slits about half an inch on both sides where they, in the middle, as you see me doing right here. And there's my Samantha Poo. She's always got to check on what I'm doing. So now I just take the remaining amount of ribbon and I cut the same amount um, from all three ribbons and I'm going to make my tails. So once I have my length, what I'll do is I'll fold it in half and then cut the same, um, I'll cut the same little half inch slits on both sides and then I'll use a Chanel stem and some zip ties to add the tails and the loops. Sorry, I'm out of frame, guys. I wasn't thinking about the Chanel stems and I didn't have it close to me so I had to take it off of that um, wreath frame to use one. So I'm just going to take two of the small zip ties and put them together kind of like I did on the frame with the yellow ones and then I'll flip it over and I will actually put the Chanel stem right in the middle and then I'll just tighten it all down. Now here's my favorite part and that's fluffing the bows. It's so important to make sure that you have your loops all fluffed out and separated um, and make sure that they're all going in different directions so they can be spread out pretty evenly. Now the good thing about this wired ribbon, which I always use wired ribbon when it comes to making bows or tails, is that it's just really forgiving. As you can see, I'm pretty, I'm pretty hard on mine, um, just because I'm trying to get them to move properly to where it's um, going in the different directions. Because sometimes if you, if you don't get them to separate at the bottom where they're tied together then they won't spread out very well you'll see it kind of goes into just like more of a circle pattern and you you won't get as many of the loops in the middle of the bow so that's why i'm pretty rough on mine but like i said it's really forgiving um and as long as you've got them tied together really well you don't really have to worry about them coming on loose or breaking or any of that sort of thing.
I'm going to do is just take um, my scissors and just dovetail the ends of the tails. You can do them all at the same length. You can do them at different lengths. Just however you feel like you want your um, tails to look. Now, I still, I felt like something was missing um, out of, <clears throat> excuse me, after I put the ribbons in, it still kind of looked like it was needing something. So I know I went back and folded under the Chanel stems. And this is one reason, y'all, I'm going to tell you, it's good that you fold it under versus cutting them off is because... You never know when you want to go back and add something and that way you can untie them just like I'm doing here and add something to it again and you don't have to worry about there not being enough space um, to be able to clamp everything down now had I went in and trimmed those down instead of folding them under then there was no way that I would have been able to go back and add these cute little bows on to the ends. So just a tip for you guys. And actually here, you can add lemons, flowers, anything of the sort, um, but I didn't have any at the time around me, and I didn't really want to add any flowers to it. Um, I, I'm not that wreath maker that likes to add a lot of flowers to deco mesh wreaths and door hangers. I think they're very cute and they're very beautiful. Um, but I really like to do that just when I'm working with grapevine wreaths. So once I have that, then all I'm going to do is take some of the hot glue and I'm going to hot glue the sign on there and call it a day. So I really enjoyed making this video. Thank you, Sonia, for hosting. Please be sure to check out the playlist and check out all the other beautiful creators that are um, participating in this challenge. And I hope you guys have a very blessed day. Thank you for stopping by.